Thank you. Good morning. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I'm very, very proud to be here as the founder of the World Pension Summit for the third time in a row and see so many familiar faces, the faces we've seen the last couple of years joining this summit in Abuja. Welcome. First of all, I would like to thank PENCOM for their hospitality and their co-makership of this World Pension Summit, and especially Shinelo Anoho Amazu and Grace Uzoro for hosting this event again in Africa, with the ambition to let and to create awareness for pensions grow in Africa. This is very important. And if you look at the program, it's uh, going to be a great summit, I'm sure of that. As said, the theme this year is challenging and inspiring. It's uh, pensions, innovations, the African perspective, and I'm sure you think, what can we expect of that? Well, I think it will be promising. Innovation is something which is for many people something abstract, but I can assure you that you are an innovator. And before I can prove that, I need your, your, your help to prove this. So I'm going to be doing a small research, and I need your cooperation for this little research. So uh, I'm going to ask you four questions, and I would like to have your answer in the following way. Could you raise your right arm if you use a smartphone? I think most of people have a smartphone here. Uh, could you raise your left arm if you use a tablet? Wow, almost everybody has a tablet. Good. Could you raise your right arm again if you use electronic payment? It's massive. Good, thank you. The last question, could you raise your left arm if you use Facebook? Let's see how this goes. Wow, everybody is on Facebook. So what you just did, what you just have done, is the first World Pension Summit morning workout. Thank you. You're fit for the summit now. But seriously, innovation is not something weird or complicated. And um, I remember, if you remember the smartphone introduction, which is nothing more than the com combination of three different existing technologies. It's about a touchscreen technology, it's a small computer, and a wireless connection to the Internet. So nothing special about that. And remember that in 2007, Apple introduced the first iPhone. It's only nine years ago. So a combination of technique coming from a vision what users might find in handy. Just have everything in your pocket. Portable. Your payments, your internet connection, your social connections, every possible matter is available in your hand. That's the advantage of smart smart smartphones, phones. literally. Also, your pension could be in your pocket. That's one of the options. And if we look at this type of technology, Africa has an amazing growth and therefore a great potential. The number of smartphones and the smartphone connections across Africa has doubled in the last two years reaching over 226 million smartphones, and the total amount of mobile phones has grown over 1 billion phones. Selling prices of smartphones have dropped from an average of $230 to 160, uh, 200, yeah, 160 in 2050, and in Kenya, Huawei has just introduced a smartphone which costs less than $100. So n lower smartphone prices are driving a digital revolution in Africa, allowing mobile phone users to access the Internet at unprecedented levels. Operators in development are also leveraging the power of mobile networks to transform services in health, social security, agriculture, education, energy, and pensions. In Kenya, 61% of mobile phone users use a device to transfer money in neighboring Uganda, this is 42%, and Tanzania, 39%, and it's growing fast, it's growing rapidly. And the fact is, when people are used to these kind of activities by phone, they are close to the access for another savings device, their pension. So for the pension industry, one big hurdle can be taken easily, the accessibility of pension propositions. In different pension solutions, they can be offered online, like micropensions, Large groups of workers that are now not connected to a pension system can be included. 
The case for micropensions is compelling as global poverty is rising. Around 80% of the workforce in developing countries works in the informal sector, which means not registered with or as a company. These people have no regular or official income tax for contributions and they do not qualify for standard pensions. So the majority of society has no access to a service that provides them with social security after retirement. The size of the informal sector is staggering. In Africa, it's estimated that 480 million people, and worldwide it's 1.8 billion people, are in the informal sector. So any innovation that can lower the threshold to include this group is more than welcome. With a widespread mobile network in low-income groups and trusted systems to make mobile and micropayments, there's a good basis for mobile banking and saving products. Mobile technology will play a key role in both the payment of microsystem, pensions, and other alternatives for the informal sector and the communication of these products. And of course, there are more examples of innovations that illustrate new thinking about problems and dilemmas in the pension industry. For example, new technology that gives you interactive access to your pension plan. So you know that if you are saving enough, or decide if you want to take more risk to create a higher return. Smart apps for retirement planning, easy pension calculators can go on. These technologies enter in high pace in the African pension world. And of course, there are also innovations like scheme development, innovative investment strategies, and other categories of innovation, but are there also downsides on the innovation? And yes, they are, and we should take care of them. If new, new developments enter the market, we should be careful with innovations that can hurt or even destroy trust of beneficiaries. Cybercrime will be one of them. As pension pots are always representing lots of money, cybercrime will be a realistic threat to the sector. Another threat will be big data. The speed of integration of big data in our lives also threatens the comfort of privacy. Pension institutions should be in the forefront to be aware of that and take action to prevent themselves from negative side effects of in innovative technology. I'm really happy that this summit has embraced innovation as a key topic for the African pension world. And as I, I said before, innovation is something that can come from every individual in this room. To combine existing elements existing concepts and give them a new format or unexpected impact is one way of taking innovative steps. So let's develop innovations in the African pension industry and I'm sure that this will all lead to more creativity in the pension world in Africa. And it can become a groundbreaking experience for the entire pension world, all over the world. I want to conclude wishing you an inspiring, fruitful, and in any way innovative World Pension Summit Africa Special 2016, and I would like to introduce my colleague, partner, publisher of Pensions and Investments, and CEO of the World Pension Summit, Chris Battaglia. Give him a big hand. Thank you.